My name is Adrian Nanchev, and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So today, I'm joined with Jean Hakez to talk about personal development. So please, Jean, introduce yourself, tell the audience who you are, what you're doing, what you believe in, and what difference you're making for the world. Well, hello, everybody. And first of all, I just want to thank you, uh, Adrian. Uh, my name is Jean Hakez. The J sounds like an H, so that for those of you that are reading might pronounce it differently. But uh, I'm from the Dominican Republic, so I'm a Latino. But I was raised in Queens, New York. So my hometown is New York City. Been there basically all my life. And I've been basically an entrepreneur per se about maybe five years. But uh, it's been something that's been in me for even longer because uh, when it comes to having a job, I've always felt really unsatisfied. So I've always decided to you know, work my way up, see how far I can get. But I was always stopped, basically. They always stopped me at a level, management, management. I wanted, always wanted more, you know, because when it comes to the money, of course, you know, you need the money. But... I just didn't feel like, you know, this is where I needed to be. And as my life just kept getting, you know, crazier and crazier, I decided I ran across a couple of MLMs, which if you know, you know, MLMs is for multi-level marketing. Started that, did a couple of those offline. They're really good in uh, some of them. And actually one of them I did... Um, top recruiter of the month. And I started to see that, you know, hey, this is something that uh, it connects with me and the people, especially the people. That's one of the things that really drive me in. People have been very supportive, very willing to teach and uh, also open to learn. And it made me, made me see that, hey, you know, I got to change the people around me. And because the people that weren't were around me weren't really helping me. They weren't helping me to develop myself, basically. And I started connecting with other leaders um, in businesses that I started uh, doing. And I'm pretty sure you know Tony Robbins, right? Yes. Well, Tony Robbins was one of those that kind of um, started my fire when I started hearing about him. Uh, listening to audiobooks, watching a couple of YouTube channels. Uh, people talk about him and also his videos. And so one day I decided, you know what? I've always heard from him and other people that you got to pay yourself first. So let me invest in myself. I'm going to go to one of his seminars. And if you know one of his uh, seminars uh, in New York is called the Un Unleash the Power Within or I think it's called the fire walk because in that event at the end. Uh, so here's a spoiler for those of you that might go in the future, Whoa. you actually walk over, you know, hot coal. So you basically walk over fire. And that to me was one of the like, most amazing things in my life so far that I never thought I would do something like that. You know, you always seen on TV, People do those things like, oh, my God, they're crazy. How do they not feel pain or something? Is it that they're special? But, I mean, it's all a mind game. Like, you just got to uh, – I, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> you just got to go to one of those events. So what is it you're doing now? Uh, so now I, I'm basically a, a online marketer. I market – uh, other companies, and I affiliate myself with companies that pay me commission for selling their product and services. And I'm in the in the process of making my own uh, product as well with my own website. Um, recently partnered with a company called uh, Builder All, so they let me become a basically have a franchise partner with them. Um, now I was talking to uh, Randy as well. He's one of the leaders there. Um, and with that, that's actually helping me build my website. And uh, hopefully pretty soon once I finish it, um, I'll be able to start 
offering my services to people. But of course, I believe that I don't really have to charge in the beginning or basically in the front end, I'm not going to be charging people for my services on, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, uh, learning certain things, certain skills so that you can, uh, one, be successful in whatever you put your mind to. Because, yeah, I might not be, you know, a big, big known person like Tony Robbins or Gary V or or Ty Lopez as well. But, you know, I got to start somewhere. And because I've seen also that people really don't, uh, they don't think that they're worth of earning a certain uh, amount of income or being in a certain amount of like wealthiness status or having a certain lifestyle because they don't think like, Hey, you know, that's not for me. Um, I've been taught that I got to go to school, get good grades and get a decent job and then retire after 40, 50 years, but yet still have to pay bills and hardly um, really be happy with what I'm doing. I read a statistic once that up to 80% of people are not doing what they like to do in life. So that means that the majority of their time, their day, you know, being awake or throughout their life, they're not doing the stuff they want to do in life. They're not doing the things they love. They're not doing the things they, they give a damn about. Exactly. That's, that's so true. I know because that's how I felt. Like I said, when in my jobs... Yeah, I needed the money, but I wasn't happy with it. when I was going to work. You know, you wake up, you put your alarm, you're like, oh, my God, five more minutes. I don't want to go. And all of us go through that, you know. But um, and we also lie to ourselves. which just it's insane that we lie to ourselves because we tell ourselves like, well, I love my job. Um, I'm getting paid good, but yet when you step back and you look at the things that are going on in your life, you're like, well, I'm not really too happy. Yeah, I might love my job, but it's taking time for my kids or my family or the things that I really want to do or my hobbies. And it's something that I think that people should uh, start really focusing on because unfortunately society doesn't teach you that. It teaches you that you got to follow a certain standard to pay your bills. They teach you about jobs and, and debt and bills, but they don't really teach you about creating wealth, happiness, and, you know, not really putting yourself in a deep hole, which most of us usually do. Well, the way I see it is that, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that society doesn't teach us for one reason or another. I think mostly it's because of compartmentalization, where it's just good people, misguided people, teach sincerely teaching you the lessons that they have learned, that they've been regurgitated to them for the past decades and decades, maybe century, maybe, maybe not. And it's just that most people that are teaching in the world aren't necessarily most smartest or most richest people they might okay they might be the smartest book smart mathematic wise or algebra or science wise but when it comes to understanding the modern economy or how the world works these days or how the world has changed over the past 100 or so years certainly over the past 50 or so years people they they um they haven't kept up with the times and how the world is moving on they don't understand that like the 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 uh, the gatekeepers, the barriers to entry to start your own business has collapsed. Silicon yep. Valley is investing billions. The technology now to do something online has completely changed. And it's, it's, it's even 10 years ago in 2007, it was, I'd say it was difficult back then. I, I don't know, I wasn't in business back then, but I'd say it was difficult. But compared to nowadays, even to start this uh, podcast, there's the hardware, the microphone, already had the headphones, most of the software more or less comes free. Uh, the hosting online is for free as well. It's all online. You create this, create something, 
and then you can put it put it together and it's online and you do that a few times builds momentum builds it builds attention builds trust you, you can known liked and trusted you slap it online and that can generate sales in one way or another yeah that that's definitely true uh thanks to the technology nowadays youtube facebook um instagram oh, especially yeah. um facebook live man facebook live has completely changed my my business when it comes to uh, my online services because uh, Facebook co- connects with billions of people and everybody's on their phone 24-7. The first thing you do, I know first thing I do is wake up, look at my phone, check the time, you know, turn off my alarm clock and check my Facebook because, you know, you get notified about everything that's going on. But how are you using Facebook Live? I find that Facebook Live is a rather rather contained environment you go live they send a notification out but only the people that are friends with you and or people that are following you already will be able to see that and the opposite the complete opposite of that is like a periscope or what twitter is where like the whole world can see you but i think instagram is a nice medium where if you create stuff even live people that are following you and people that search the right hashtags can find you yeah, that that's true to an extent for your personal profile. When it comes to Facebook and fan pages, that's where you reach basically anybody and everybody in the world uh, according to what your fan page is about and what niche uh, are you in. So I have a fan page uh, right now. It's over like 10,000 uh, likes on it, and it's, and it's growing. So I put content there. I put a... Uh, I put quotes, put videos of my life or videos of certain things that I'm I'm part of or things that I market and products that I think might benefit an entrepreneur or someone that has an online business. So when I go live uh, with the Facebook fan page, Facebook looks at my Facebook likes, all the people that follow me, notifies them, and then it also shares it and tries to build an audience according to what my page is about. So let's say you don't like my Facebook fan page, but you're into entrepreneurship, you're into uh, Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, all these things are connected because that's what my Facebook um, algorithm that Facebook creates, uh, it's about. So you might be browsing through your phone and you finish watching a Tony Robbins video and then, you know, when you're watching a video, there's always a video that can follow when you scroll down. So then you might see my video because Facebook algorithm collected information saying that, hey, you know, you might like this because, you know, Gene Hackett's fans has talked about or has mentioned Tony Robbins or the way that, I guess, my Facebook Live speaks and the, the posts that I put. So you'll be able to see it even though you're not a follower, you're not a fan, you never heard about me. Then you could come across me, watch my video, like the video, you know, or comment on the video. So then once I see that, that someone liked or comment on my video or put some type of engagement, um, Facebook allows me to invite you to my fan page, meaning I'm, in, I'm inviting you to like my page. So once you get that notification saying, hey, um, you know, you recently seen Gene's video or seen one of his posts, he's inviting you to like his page. So now I've captured basically a lead towards my fan page. So now I can send notifications. And since you like my fan page, you're going to get notified that I'm live, that I did a post and so on. I didn't know that Facebook worked that way. I thought it was all self-contained. I didn't really realize or certainly didn't notice or conceptualize that it did that. You know, here's another video to watch. Here's something else to consume. Didn't know that. Exactly. I didn't didn't know that either before. Big big, big pardon? No, I didn't know that either before when I started. I just had my Facebook page, you know, your personal page where I have all my friends uh, that I personally know. And then as I started growing as an entrepreneur and, and reaching out to people and, and connecting with leaders, they started, you know, um, sharing their knowledge. And mm-hmm. then for I purchased certain um, trainings that will cost me like, you know, 500, 1,000, because I'm like, I'm investing in myself. So that money, I'm going to get it tenfold. 
with the knowledge that I'm collecting. And I can also, now that I know it, I can, you know, in the future, create a product and sell it out there to my followers because maybe they want more in that. They want to get more personal with me because usually that's how it is. You know? What kind what, um, what kind of products are you selling exactly? How, how are you uh, providing value to the marketplace? Um, well, like I just told you recently, um, I have a franchise with Builderall. Uh, I bought a license with them so I can franchise their uh, advertise their product, which is um, creating websites, right, or c- creating capture pages for for your brand. And they just have um, a whole bunch of tools in that in that platform. Um, and the CEO Eric, he wants to basically be the top platform out there when it comes to creating websites. Like um, like Wix. Wix has millions of users every month. So that's his competitor, basically, what he says. And he wants to be in that range. And I'm sure you heard of ClickFunnels, right? Yeah. So, you know, ClickFunnels, you can create your page, capture pages, and, and funnels. The same thing that you could do with Builderall, but it's a completely different beast because it has so much value in, within the platform, so many tools. And the price range is just... Um, amazing for all the things that they offer, as well as an autoresponder and a whole bunch of other things. So I, I'm marketing that uh, right now as one of my main things. So it's essentially it's lead generation software. Uh, it could be or a platform, but they're yeah, it's a platform. But the main thing is they're they're basically a host. They're a tech company. Because they offer you the the hosting, so you create your page and everything. You don't need to buy a host from GoDaddy. Mm-hmm. You might you you might need a domain name that you can buy from GoDaddy, Namecheap, um, and a whole bunch of other um, providers. But the hosting where that page is gonna go is provided by Builderall. I see. So I want to go back a bit. You mentioned yeah. that. Um... You mentioned Tony Robbins and Walking on Fire and Unleash the Power Within. Tell me about your Walking on Fire experience. I'm oh, very, man. I'm very curious about it. <laughs> well, I went in, you know, I I went in with, with, what can I say, as an empty cup because I didn't want to go with all the knowledge that I've been knowing about him and about personal development. I wanted to start fresh, and I'm glad that I did. Mm-hmm. So went over there. It was a three-day event. I I was working at a job at that time, and I told him, "Hey, look, I'm doing this, and basically I'm gonna, you know, have three days off, and I'm not gonna get paid because it's, it's a sales job." So they're like, "All right, whatever." So went over there, took three days. Um, I stayed at a hotel with a couple of friends that we're gonna go to, but. It was funny because I didn't know they were going to go. But when I went over there, I was going to basically manage myself to go all the way to, I think it was in Jersey, and then travel all the way back to Queens. But when I went to the event, I met up with a couple of friends of mine from the previous MLMs that I'd done. And I was like, oh, hey, huh? it's been a long time. So they asked me if I was staying in a hotel. I'm like, no, I'm just going to go back. They're like, that's crazy. That's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of time. You're going to get home late. Stay with us at a hotel. I was like, oh, wow, thank you. Did all that. Um, the event was super energetic. There was so much engagement with people, high-fiving, hugs, kisses, talking to random strangers, um, sitting right next to them. And me, I'm a people person, so that doesn't really bother me. But I didn't think I was going to be with so many people and interact with so many people, get to know their personal life. I get to share my personal stories and how people from so many countries, we have so many things in common and we want the same goals. Uh, It's a common goal that we all are reaching and and thriving for. And Tony Robbins is just helping us, you know, realize what we can do. You know, he doesn't solve your problems. 
it just helps you get into yourself and, and basically you solve your own problems by him asking the right questions and you answering answering it. <clears throat> um, I remember watching a clip of Tony. He was talking about how um, when it comes to su- uh, success, it's all down to how resourceful you are with what you have at, what you have at your disposal. You know how resourceful you are with the technology or the information or the ideas or, or knowledge you've got. Yeah, so, and yeah. now it's, it's very accessible. You know, you have it in the palm of your hands. You have the whole world in your hand because. Look at Google. You know, people just say, hey, um, how do you do this? Google it. You'll find out. Or YouTube it. How do I cook, you know, fried beans? YouTube it. Google it. Yeah. You can find everything. You don't need to go to a library. Drive or walk to 30 minutes. Find out a cooking book. Look through the recipes and find the recipes that you want. Now, in your hand or on your computer, just search how to make fried beans, how to make this, this, and that. There's so much content out there for free as well. And, of course, paid as also. But all depends on the resources that you uh, they have access to. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because you, you said that Tony helps you to solve your own problems. And so whenever I hear that, or when, when, after I heard that, you know, how resourceful you are, I always then think, the answer's in front of me, somehow, or a answer is in front of me. It's just down to me to figure out the correct configuration, the correct layout, the correct sequence of what I have in front of me to solve the problem. True. Also, um, with the firewalking, how was how was the actual firewalking bit? How was that? Well, <laughs> that part, he literally does prepare you... Um, I guess he does his best to try to hypnotize you because he prepares you by, you know, you close your eyes and he tells you a whole bunch of things. Uh, and this was a few years back, so I can't remember exactly what he said, but he he makes you do the firewalk in your head. So he's going to tell you, ignore that you're walking in on hot coal. Just once we go outside, because it's outside, um, of course, you don't want hot fire coals in an indoor. But once you go outside, we're going to have people out there and, you know, I'm going to do it and you're just going to copy me. You're going to do as, as I'm telling you. And you're going to do it. Don't don't run. Don't panic. Just go through the, the steps that I'm going to tell you. You're going to say this out loud. You're going to think this. And then when I say walk. You just walk. Don't run. Don't speed walk. Just normal walk. Keep looking forward. Don't look down. And get to the other side where one of his personal coaches are there. And then also the other people that just walked. And they're on the other side just cheering on. Like, come on, everybody's excited. And in my head, I'm like, holy, you know, holy shish kebab. (laughs) Am I actually going to do this? I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I don't know if I could do this. I'm like, wait, no, stop. I just learned from Tony Robbins that not to stop myself, right? I know I can do it. If he's able to do it, all these people that are in front of me are doing it. Why can't I? I I don't see nobody screaming, nobody crying that it hurts. They're just walking. So, of course, the nerves are insane. My hands are sweaty. And I'm scared, but I'm like, I'm going to do it. I have to do it. I came here for that reason. You know, I didn't spend thousands of dollars to come in here and not do this. So once it came to my turn, he said, just go. I walked, went to the other side. They washed my feet. And I was like, wow, I did it. And I was just jumping, screaming, hugging everybody kissing everybody. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I was like, you know, if I can do this, what can I do? You know, basically nobody can tell me I can't do anything. If you tell me, well, you know, you can't really make a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, you, you have to spend five years in a company or 10 years to even get to that range. I'm like, no, that's not possible. 
I can make that happen in a year or less if I put my mind to it. Which, um, yeah. <laughs> Just remembering oh. right now is bringing, me, bringing memories. <laughs> yeah, Very emotional and good stuff. Yeah, of course that kind of money is possible. I mean, like, I mean, I say that you can make a hundred thousand a year just by teaching people how to make the perfect pancake on YouTube. There are yeah. th- there's four different strategies I use for monetization, like or like a template, like an architecture. Is um, the first one is free products. So I'll create something on mass and give it away for free, which to helps build reputation and build SEO and build attention to be known, liked, and trusted. For example, this podcast. And then I'll give away a, a cheap product. And the cheap product is low value but high volume. Five pound, ten pound, twenty quid, something like that. That can be sold mm-hmm. on scale, preferably automatically, you know, automatic uh, shipping, f- f- fulfillment, stuff like that. And the next one up to that is the expensive product. So it's high value, low volume. Something that's a thousand or two or three or whatever. That needs to be sold really once a week or once a month, depending on a few variables. And then most, the the one after that is a subscription. Subscription. Mm-hmm. So if you can persuade 100 people to pay you 50 quid, 100 quid, 200 pounds, for example, a month, that shows there's like a reliable cash flow into the into the business, into the venture, and there's always money there as well. Those are things that I look for as a template for reaching 100,000. Rather straightforward. And, and because the world we live in now, people niches and monopolies on, on different topics and subjects, people will... There's a market for everyone and every topic out there. There's an old saying in England, which is any old rope. People will buy anything. People will. I'm telling you, they will buy anything. <laughs> and uh, 100,000? 100, nice. Try and get 10,000 first before you jump, just jump to that. Yeah, that that's true. And... Um... What's uh, talking about that just reminded me. Um, I was at a few months ago. Was at a at a workshop that I had to attend, unfortunately. Um, when it comes to building resumes and um, doing better at interviews, because uh, like I told you before, uh, when we talked before this, uh, I'm in the army, right? Mm-hmm. So since I'm going to be getting out soon, the Army decided that, you know, a lot of veterans are unemployed. So they decided to build a, a program to help veterans transition out to the regular uh, civilian world. So I had to go to a workshop on how to build a resume, how to present myself. And I'm like, I already know all this because I came to the Army as a as a desire to personally grow myself and accomplish things that I've always wanted to do in life. Uh, so when I went to this workshop and in one of the classes, the teacher had asked, she went around, you know, what's your salary range that you prefer? And she started going around and I just started hearing people say, oh, 35,000, 30, uh, 40 to 30, 45 to 50, 45 to 55, but nobody ever went over 55. When she got to me, I'm like, well, 150 to 250. And everybody, whoa, was shocked to hear such a big number. Um, They're like, that's too much money. I can't have that, you know. Then I got to get paid taxes. And I'm like, that doesn't matter. Because in reality, then you're not really putting yourself to the best potential that you can actually be. And when it comes to the real world, since they're used to being in the military, if you're making fifty five thousand after taxes, it's probably like maybe fifty or forty eight. So you can't really survive on that that much. So you're gonna have to get a second job or do something else to, you know, get by. So you're just basically gonna be working paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. And then you're gonna be complaining because you never set a a, a higher standard for yourself, you know. Yeah, you don't want to blow it out of the water and be like, oh, yeah, a million dollars. You can start at a decent high amount. Like for myself, you know, 250000 I know it's definitely doable because I've already done 90 and 80. So my next step eight is 100, 200. And then later on, maybe, you know, 500000 But I know at a job, I'm not going to be able to really do that 
so that's why entrepreneurship has been like it's been in me for such a long time well that that to me is the real glass ceiling that's the glass ceiling of like how much how much money you can make in a, in a calendar year a lot of people are be, are uh, limiting themselves by their job their employment or what they're doing in life in general and you know if you get paid say 10 pounds an hour then you're theoretically limited to earning 240 pounds in a day in a single 24 hour period that to me is the real glass ceiling because once you understand that that limitation is only temporary you jump out of the boat for example and um become an entrepreneur or, or do something in your own way you, you know by your own by your own ambition by your own rules then realistically there really is no cap to how much money you can create because it's all exactly. down to you your performance your abilities your talents what you do what you what you do with your time how productive you are stuff like that and also it's interesting to hear that little story little, little story you were talking about because i wouldn't have imagined that people in the military would have would have restricted themselves so much would have hold themselves back from their earning potential because in the military you know you're trained to be resourceful you're trained to be uh you know survivalist so to speak i'm quite surprised that people had that you know you train to think outside the box but i'm quite, exactly. I'm quite surprised, so i'm quite surprised that these you know, these other people you were with were were not thinking outside the box and not applying this the things they'd learned in the military in the outside world in the civvies in the civilian world with regards to how what they can do and what they can perform why did yeah, that is was, the case? I was shocked as well. Um, and when I when I heard that, I was like, well, you know, in reality, you guys are are limiting how much you can make because, you know, the jobs out there there that you have, you know, you you can transition a certain career that you're doing in the military to a civilian world, and you can find a salary that's you know higher paying than what you're getting paid right now in the military. But uh, the reason that I, I think that they limit themselves because, uh, you know, they've been in the military for a certain amount of time. So they're very accustomed to, you know, getting a certain pay for, you know, doing their regular job. But on top of that, they have the benefits of um, getting paid for where they live because they live in the barracks. So they don't have to worry about paying rent. They don't have to worry about buying food. Because the food is provided, but it's still, of course, you're still paying for it, but it's not like you're going grocery shopping and cooking for yourself because they have a defect, which is a, a cafeteria where the people just go, soldiers go in and eat, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it's already prepared for you. So you don't really have to worry about that. So they're basically, I guess, um, pampered, per se, in some way that, you know, hey, you know, there's... A good life, easy life. All you gotta do is just do your your job, whether whether it's a mechanic, a doctor, and we'll pay you for that. But then you got you got your benefits to fall on, and that's why a lot of people that I've met in the military they stay in for ten, twenty, thirty, thirty years because you know if they go back to the civilian world, they're not gonna have those benefits, and if they do. It's gonna take them a lot uh, of hard work to to get those benefits. Whether you know they were in the military, they already did their hard work. They you know they busted their their themselves and to reach a certain rank, a certain position, and now to get out of the military, they gotta work even harder. So why not just stay stay the easy road? Yeah, I see what you mean. I think it's just comfort zone when people come down to it. It's just not everyone, not everyone dares to. Not not everyone. I, I don't know. Just stop limiting beliefs. Maybe they maybe they associating with the wrong kind of people. Maybe they tell themselves, at the end of the day, the wrong disempowering phrases or beliefs or mantras. It could be yeah. anything. Yeah, and it's funny. Um, uh, a guy in the back of the class. The the clown of the class was like, well, you know, I've already served my time, so I deserve to just, like, I just want to chill, I want to relax and, you know, just get paid to do nothing. And I'm like, wow, I mean, 
you've only worked for the military for what four years, and yeah, you you know you did your service. You know, thank you for your service, but you have to think about more than that. You know, where do you see yourself? How are you gonna contribute to to the civilian world? Because you already contributed to the army, and we thank you for that. But now you gotta contribute to the real world, where you're gonna eventually have a family. And where do you see yourself with your family? What are they gonna have? You know, what's their future now? Because now it's not about you anymore. It's about your family, your kids, if you're going to have any kids. And you want to leave a legacy and, you know, and be proud of, yeah, I'm in the military and I'm proud that I was able to set something for my family uh, later on down the future. So what kind of legacy and what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind and uh, where do you see yourself in the future? Well, I see myself one just not having a job. That's one. Um, and I'm actually due real soon, uh, September 1st, my firstborn. I'm going to have a baby girl. And I want to make sure that, you know, I have everything already prepared, as in a house for my family and the money set aside for any emergencies. But I'm not going to teach my kids that, hey, you know, I build wealth for you so you have it easy. I build wealth for you so that you know that, hey, if anything happens, you can fall upon it, but don't depend upon it. You have to be very independent and, you know, make your own money, understand what money is, because in school, you're not really going to learn that. They're just going to teach you the basics of, you know, history, math, and you have to make sure you get good grades and make sure you don't copy anybody because it's frowned upon in the school industry. But yet in the real world, copying somebody is actually the best way to be successful because that's something that I've learned from Tony Robbins, going back to that. you know, He says, find somebody that has something that you want or the success that they've had and copy them. You copy them, do what they do, see their process, and you do the same thing, and you are bound to have either the same results or even better because all depends on your work ethic that you put behind it. And, um, you know, if you do that in school, <laughs> you get expelled, you get in trouble, dean's office, why are you copying this person? We're like, well, you know, they know how to do it. I want to learn from them, so why not? Yeah, Tony also says that success leaves clues. Exactly. And uh, congratulations on the uh, the girl. First September, Friday the 1st. I will add a reminder on my phone to congratulate you on the day. Thank you, man. Thank you. And with regards to copying and getting in trouble, yeah, that that seems to be a common thing in the world now where it, it's it's all... It's all based on your grades. It's all based on your grades and what you do with your, what you what you do with your, what you do with you know school and college and university. And it's like, well, no one really cares in the end. No one really cares when when you go for when you go to the bank, for example, or start your business or go to investors. They don't really care. They, they the investors, especially in the states, they care more about how many times you failed in business and what you're trying yeah. to do, as opposed to <laughs> as opposed to what your grades were or. Or what you try, or what you accomplished in school, or whether you were the uh, captain of the lacrosse team, or stuff like that. Exactly. I, yeah. In the applications, you don't go like, so yeah, I graduated top of my class. I got a, you know, a hundred on all my tests. So can I get approved? You're like, no, I don't care about that. What's your work mm. ethic? You know, what's your experience? Have you done this? Have you done that? And they're like, well, no, but I am great at putting numbers in a calculator. And I can take tests and pass them, so it doesn't really apply to the real world. And it and it's sad that we've been in that for you know centuries. And mm. I don't know when it's gonna that you know that path is gonna break. Hopefully soon, someday. Once my baby girl goes to school, I hope that you know the school that I 
apply her to. Uh, of course, I'll do research and make sure that they teach her, you know, certain things that I would love to see uh, her learn. I can't help but think the system may never change with regards to the education. This kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier in the interview where, in the podcast, where it is, there's a mismatch between what the world needs, what the world does, the digital economy, and it's only going to get even more complicated and more beautiful and more significant and more powerful and fast. Uh, and yet the schools are always teaching what to do in this kind of world. And it, it's, I, I think that with the, the, the modern school system where it's uh, in the summer holidays, summer vacation, they're six weeks off, that is, that is, I've heard that's more to do with like, the 17th century or the 19th century harvest harvest cycle where during the summer when the harvests were up they needed the extra workforce the children so they come to the field to harvest the crop and uh, you know and, and prepare the crop for next year and i, I believe that that so that kind of like timeline for the for the year is, is permeated still today with regards to the summer holidays and with regards to the school year so <laughs> if anything if anything the, the the system the establishment is is very behind the scenes uh, not behind the scenes uh, backwards Behind the times, yeah, very uh, outdated. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's ever going to change. Really, it, it's very slow, slow. Maybe in a, maybe in a hundred years from now, it might be it might catch up to our standard or, or our priorities and our our way of thinking and resourcefulness and all the rest. But no, it's going to take a long time to change significantly to correct the correct the the wrongs of the past. You know. Yeah, that's that's true. I. It, I mean, when I was in school, it didn't change. My brother went to school, it didn't change. Baby sister is going to school, it's not changing. So it's gonna take a, a while. But you know, there are little, little um, lights here and there at the end of the tunnel where we we see that people are noticing this and they're they're speaking up about it. Because um, I don't know if you've seen. A uh, very viral video with um I forgot his name um that he talks about suing the school system. No, and, su- no. Yeah, uh, man, what's the name of it? It's really it's got millions and millions of views on YouTube. Um, I'll probably I'll shoot you the link once I find it later on so you can check it out. But yeah, uh, it's this guy. He's a he's a poet and he makes his poems. And he talks about how the school system. First, he starts with, uh, you know, look at our cell phones. Look at our phones a few years back and a few years back, and you see the difference. How, you know, we went from cord phones to wireless phones to cell phones, and it just everything grows and, and adapts to society and televisions and communication. But then he says, look at the school system now. Look at the school system. A few centuries ago, look at it like 100 years ago, did you notice something? It has not changed. But yet, you know, we we force it onto te- um, our, our students and, and kids to, you know, this is the way to be. And in the video, he says, you know, he has a fish inside a bowl and the fish is taught that he can climb a tree. But... He's never going to climb a tree because, you know, he's stuck in that bowl. But they're teaching you that you could, but they're limiting you. They're keeping you in there. I got to look at that. Bit. <laughs> but, yeah. I, uh, I I think I might have seen that a few months ago. I'm not quite sure. How old, how old is it? Uh, I think it came out, like, in 2014 or 15. Yeah, this does sound a little familiar, though. I'm not quite sure about the poems bit, but... I can no, I'm not too sure, but I'll I'll have a look at that. Add it in the description. Uh, must must remember to do that. Uh, I won't worry too much about it, you know. Just uh, fo- focus on your daughter, focus on your future, focus yeah, on focus on, th- focus on what you can control. That is being affected by the outside world. Don't worry too much about the things you can't control directly or indirectly. Just control. Focus on things you can control, and then also at the same time, go out there and make a difference. You make, people talk about being the difference they want to see in the world. 
Well, that's kind of reason why I started this channel as well and this podcast to just make people be- help entrepreneurs become remarkable, help a million entrepreneurs become remarkable, and also because I I knew that I I knew that I know stuff. I know that I know stuff that can change people's lives or you know, change the world in a better play, in a better way. So it was like doing it, doing my knowledge justice and sharing it with the world. Because, because, Gene, if the education system isn't going to change, then we have <laughs> to educate the world. Exactly, that's so true. And I'm glad they say that because uh, when I first started and how probably 99% of the people that start into entrepreneurship, their first main goal is I need the money, right? Because there's, there's a need that you that you have. But yet when you start learning and, you know, developing yourself, you start realizing, yeah, I need the money, but it's not really about the money. It's about how I can change people around me and, and give a positive, you know, um, I'll take in their life, and in return, it's going to change my life for the better because my focus is not about benefiting myself. My focus is benefiting the people that I connect with, the people that I talk to and, and I teach. And when I did that that change of, you know, hey, you know, I have this product, get this, buy that, wasn't having really much success. Then I was like, you know what? I've been learning so many things. Let me teach it. If I can teach it now, um, you know, some people might not have the money to afford to go to Tony Robbins or afford a course from, you know, uh, Ty Lopez because they don't they don't have the resources. But if I can take what I've learned from all these leaders and just give it to the world in my point of view, how I took it, then, you know, they can thank me. Like, you know, hey, thank you, G, you know, you showed me how to do this. Now my business or now I want to start making money online. I want to start, you know, building a brand. And it was all thanks to you. You know, I didn't charge him one penny. And that actually makes me feel a lot better than when I get a commission from them. You know, it's it's an, an invisible um, currency, basically, that I'm getting from them which is the satisfaction of, you know, being able to help others. And doing that has been increasing my income. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to focus on putting out a product where I can charge 20, 50, whatever. I'm just going to put out my knowledge. And I will build a following and, you know, maybe build a website where people can come learn from me, learn things that I've done, and then if there's something that I can teach them or a product that I purchased that I'm associated with, hey, look, check this out. I recommend you to try this because I did this. They buy it. They try it. And because they've already grown and, and known that, you know, what Gene is telling me actually works. So I trust in what he's buying. So now that he refers me to this, I'm going to try it out. And in the back end, you know, I'm earning something. And I think, Gene, that's a good point to end this interview on. What is the best way for the audience to get in touch with you? What's the best ways? Uh, right now, the best way would be my fan page on Facebook. So, facebook.com slash Gene Hawkins fans all together with an S at the end. And that's where I basically talk to people. Um, they get to see what I do in my life when I go out shopping with my wife. Uh, when I have webinars where we teach um, every week, just free marketing on how to better your marketing for your current business or how to uh, attract people to to your fan page um, and also how to build an email list, things like that, all, all involving network marketing and um, benefiting for your, yourself in general. Gene, it was great to have you on the show. Thanks a, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you as well. Thank you for reaching out and connecting. And I think what you're doing is uh, it's really great that you're sharing with people the steps, you know, errors, mistakes, because like we said before, it's better to copy somebody that's already done it. So if they've made mistakes, you don't want to make the same mistake and have you, you know, reach a certain level 
in three to five years when with Adrian's help, he did it already. He's going to help me do it within two or maybe a couple of months, depending on how I take the content. Yes, exactly that. Exactly that. But thanks a lot for coming. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. Got you, no problem, Adrian. Thank you again. And um, it's nighttime for you, so I hope you have a great night and good sleep. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye for now. Have a good day. <laughs> Take care, man.